Hi there, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. Today, I'm going to talk about the China AI value chain. For the longest time, we know that China access to AI is limited by the West, especially the US, right? So China does not have uh, access to the top-end NVIDIA AI chips, the H100, the H200. So they could only buy a toned-down version or watered-down version of the NVIDIA chip that's meant for China. And as well as equipment like ASML's EUV lithography machine that's used to again make very uh, high-end chips uh, like 2 nanometers, 3 nanometers, that kind of uh, fidelity, right, are also not accessible to China. And lastly, as well as uh, TSMC, which is the world's most advanced foundry, and uh, China could not uh, ask TSMC to make those high-end chips anymore as well, right? So you can see from many different angles or segments of the AI value chain, uh, China is being crippled in terms of access to AI development uh, avenues. So what China did was, of course, they want to have their depend uh, independence and they want to build their own AI value chain. So we would be able to see that over time, maybe the next few years, there will be two uh, ecosystem of AI, right? One that is uh, the rest of the world uh, led by the West and the other one would be China mainly. So today we're going to talk more about the China aspect. So when we talk about the uh, chip design, right? NVIDIA definitely is still holding the uh, top end design as uh, the GPUs are used all around the world, right? It's very powerful in terms of uh, AI processing. Uh, there is no close replacement at this point in time. But China did have some progress, right? Like Huawei with its Ascend chips. Um, and there's also Cambricon, you might not have heard of it. Um, a lot of others like Alibaba, Big Tech has also been involved in designing AI chips, uh, that one of the subsidiaries. So um, the good news is, right, some of these chips are better than the version that's sold to China. Right? So the H20, as you see in the screen, right, by NVIDIA, is sold to China. But that version has already been surpassed by homegrown chips from uh, Huawei, which is Ascend 910B, or even Cambricon Siyuan 590. Right? So these homegrown chips have already surpassed uh, what NVIDIA could sell to China. And that's why China wasn't panicking when uh, this uh, uh, access to NVIDIA chips, uh, the, the lower end kinds, were uh, halted, right? Or even when they were going to be resold to China, right? China is no longer interested because they have already surpassed it. So there are some uh, positive progress that's going on in terms of chips, but in terms of really replacing NVIDIA, it's not possible at this point in time. And Huawei did announce, right, in I think a few days ago, or even last week, uh, Huawei has uh, laid out a three-year plan and they aim to overtake NVIDIA in AI chips. Okay, so it's very ambitious, right? Whether they can really do it, it remains to be seen. But the trick that they can do it is that they may not be able to... Um, uh, they may not be able to do better than NVIDIA in terms of uh, one chip versus another chip, right? But in terms of combining a massive number of chips together, and the, the whole is uh, greater than the sum of parts, right? as the saying goes. And that means that they want to overwhelm um, the, the uh, connect a lot of the servers and the chips together right, to form a mega uh, server, mega computer right, that can be used for AI processing and that enhances the power a lot more. Right? Then um, you want to pit against NVIDIA in terms of having a single chip that's better. Right? So they want to use numbers. So I think that is the way that they are trying to achieve right, in order to uh, make something that is replaceable right, and usable at the same time for the China AI industry. Okay. And Alibaba recently also have announcement and, and uh, that is with regards to a real world uh, business transaction. China Unicom, one of the largest uh, telco in China, is the, uh, have bought Alibaba AI chips and is going to deploy in their new AI data centers. Okay, so all these again are good progress that we can see in terms of the chip design. And also hogging the news was a uh, Cambricon. This is like the closest, closest uh, competitor to NVIDIA, right? For one, it is only doing uh, the AI chips, right? And it's also a listed company, not like Huawei, because even if you want to invest in Huawei, it's not possible. It is a private company. But for Cambricon, that's a different story, right? It is listed. Um, just that you can't buy as a foreigner, but their locals can buy it. 
and it's uh, traded on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange and uh, under the China Export. Okay, and at one point the share price was higher than Baotai. Okay, so that that make the news, and even in the last one year, the stock has rallied five times. Right, so uh, it's pretty impressive, and investors are also starting to take note of um, China building its own AI value chain. And let's talk about the foundries, right? So we all know that TSMC is number one in the world in terms of market share, in terms of technology, and definitely that remains the case as of now. Uh, in China, the top end or the best foundry will be SMIC, right? And it has uh, shocked the world uh, about two years ago when they came out with a seven nanometer chip that they made for Huawei's uh, phone. I think it's a P60 phone. Uh, because uh, China was believed not to be able to make that, but they managed to. So SMIC has actually achieved a uh, seven nanometer production, just that it's limited in scale. And it's reportedly that they are testing a five nanometer. But compared to what TSMC is doing right now, it's already mass producing at three nanometers and now it's moving to two nanometers. So you can see that SMIC is uh, behind the curve and they are trying to play catch up, right? But they have definitely surprised the world that with uh, even equipment that were not as high end, they could squeeze the uh, uh, smaller nanometers production. And that is something that uh, is definitely worth noting, right? So SMIC is definitely limited by the, the access, okay? And one of it would be the ASML machine, right? Because it doesn't have the EUV machines and they are just basically optimizing the DUV machine, which is uh, lower end than the EUVs. And for a, rep a replica of ASML machine would come from SMEE. Okay, this is uh, another private company. And of course, it's a China homegrown company that makes lithography machines. But even for them, they cannot make any EUV machine right now. They are just uh, doing DUV machines. And uh, that is where the technology is severely lacking. It's not easy to replace uh, what ASML has achieved as well. And there are a lot of other machines, of course, that's needed in the entire semiconductor chain. And the good news is that other machines, uh, China had more successes. Like Naura, AMEC, they have uh, been able to produce equipment that could replace the US equivalent, like LAM Research, Applied Materials, as well as the Japanese uh, Tokyo Electron. Okay, so that's not a problem, right? The uh, remaining problem would be the equipment from KLA, right? The inspection and metrology uh, machines remains hard to be replicated. By the Chinese. So we can see that there are some areas that they have progressed a lot more, but in um, uh, some of the higher end, really the forefront of technology in terms of semiconductor manufacturing, they are not there yet. All right. But even so, okay, stocks in the semiconductor industry in China has also done well. The equipment providers that we talked about, Naura, as well as the AMEC, we can see that uh, in past one year, the share price has doubled. Right. So again, uh, investors are betting that the China semiconductor industry would do a lot better uh, in the future. Okay. And the other parts of the AI value chain, right? So there's also the servers. Okay. So servers are also not a problem for China. There's Lenovo, um, the largest uh, PC maker in the world, right? And there's also Inspire and Dawning, which you may not be so familiar, but they are uh, selling the servers uh, to the data centers, right? To the uh, AI cloud providers and uh, in the east uh, in the west will be your Dell and your HP enterprises right so they don't need to buy from the west they do have their homegrown champions to uh, uh, sell their service and same thing their share price has done well right Lenovo not as good okay uh, but you look at Inspur and Dawning we are looking at more than 200% gain from a year ago okay so you can see it's a broad based uh, semiconductor um, uh, or even expand to the AI value chain that shows the uh, investors are betting on different kinds of stocks. It's not just a specific uh, semiconductors. And the other thing that is also holding them back, right, in terms of um, uh, semiconductor production is the high bandwidth memory, okay? Uh, actually, it's more on the AI chip manufacturing, right? So um, there is no homegrown company in China that can produce this uh, high bandwidth memory or HBM in short. You still need to rely on the three major players around the world, right? SK Hynix is the largest of the three, then Samsung and Micron, right? So both 
the top two are from uh, South Korea and Micron is from the US. So there's no way that uh, China can just come up with that because their local players, Yangzi Memory Technologies and Changxing Memory Technologies do not have the HBM capabilities. And uh, it's not just China, right? Globally, there's a shortage of HBM and uh, it's, it's both, right? Not just the production of the memory itself, but also the packaging, right? That means um, building this HBM on top or uh, beside the, the AI chip. Like for example, uh, NVIDIA GPU, right? You need to stack this uh, HBM close to it. And that uh, packaging service is also having a shortage. Um, there's a bottleneck basically. Right, and on top of that, China have one more problem. There is uh, HBM is also under export control list, and there's a limited quantities that uh, it can access to. Okay, so that also cap China's uh, HBM access. So this is also another uh, area that China is falling behind, and there is no near term solution for this as well. Okay, and in terms of networking equipment, uh, China has no problem. Right, Huawei is known to have be a very good uh, telco. Uh, equipment provider, right? There's another competitor will be ZTE, also quite a large uh, uh, telco equipment company. And the uh, lesser known ones are like Reijie and Unisplender. Uh, but together, they could actually replace the West uh, networking equipment providers like Arista Networks as well as Cisco Systems, right? So this is also not a problem. And indeed, their share price also done well, right? ZT up 100% over the last one year. Reijie was up 300%. And Uni Splendor was a 62% gain over the last one year. So again, you can see uh, good returns from the networking side as well, right? So there are many, many components in the AI value chain, okay? even in China itself. Uh, I do think that investors who are interested in the AI space would have to know that for China, it would be a totally different uh, companies that are involved, right? Because of the limited access that China have to Western technology. So they have to build their own, okay? So uh, you will have to contend with two different value chain, one for global, one for China. And this, uh, uh, I think that China is not well covered and that's why I wanted to do a video on it. Okay, so this is the whole value chain. There are a lot more uh, components and companies that I have not talked about, right? Um, like for example, the cloud infrastructure, okay? But I believe that those are quite well known. Uh, Alibaba is the largest, but you also have Tencent, you also have Huawei uh, as one of the major players in cloud infrastructure. They're also the data owners, like your Tencent, WeChat has a lot of data. Uh, Alibaba, because of like e-commerce uh, transactions, they also have a lot of uh, information and data, right? including the logistics that they handle. Okay, uh, All the social media platform basically have a lot of uh, all this data. And data is necessary in order to train uh, the models, AI models, right? And again, AI models, China is not lack of. Uh, DeepSeek did impress the world when it first came out with a low cost, but equally capable model compared to uh, what ChatGPT had at that point in time, right? And along the way, we have more model developments like Alibaba uh, keep improving and uh, keep getting, getting very good top scores against other models as well. Right, so there are also other smaller players uh, who came up with their own models as well. And lastly, we talk about application. Uh, China is also not far behind, right? Uh, in terms of uh, digital assistance, in terms of autonomous driving, and in terms of robotics, I think they are much more advanced than the West. Um, a lot of the robots are already in the factories. And as well as we have uh, seen demonstration of uh, robots, they even have a robot Olympics uh, done, I think just last month. Okay, so it's an interesting thing. And basically, you can see that the AI value chain, right? Uh, we have seen pockets of opportunities. We also have seen um, areas where China is really seriously lagging. And it remains to be seen, right? Whether China can really catch up. Uh, but definitely, I think that the resolve of uh, creating a technological powerhouse uh, in terms of uh, AI development uh, is definitely there, right? They are very determined to make it happen. So we shall see, okay? but for investors who are keen to explore, yeah, I hope this uh, video has been useful to you. Uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.